the ASIC Super Blast and the Nike Invincible 3. Two shoes that share a lot of overlap, but they're not quite the same thing. I did a comparison video between the ASICS Nova Blast 3 and the Nike Invincible 3. And in the comments for that video, a lot of people said that the actual comparison is between the Invincible 3 and the Super Blast. At the time, I agreed. I just didn't have a Super Blast to compare them to. But now I do have a Super Blast, and I've spent a lot of time in the Super Blast. And I think the comparison between the Invincible 3 and the Super Blast is correct. But it's not exactly what I think people think. I think the best place to start for this one is to really look at all three of these shoes together and really kind of understand the relationship that they have. So if you take the Nova Blast 3 and you put it all the way to the left of this scale, that is your true performance daily trainer. It's a little bit more than an A6 Cumulus, but it's still meant to be more of a performance daily trainer, meaning there's a little bit more shoe there, there's a little bit more foam there, there's a little bit more bounce. And it's a great performance trainer, especially if you like a softer or squishier shoe for your daily miles. Then you take the Nike Invincible 3, and there's a ton of overlap there with the Nova Blast in the sense that that also is a performance trainer. It is a shoe that you can use for daily training, but because it is ZoomX foam, Nike's top end racing foam, it's a shoe that can do a little bit more. With the Nova Blast, Maybe it's great for those easier daily miles. You can do a lot of great training in it. The FF Blast Plus foam in that shoe will let you down at some point, especially if you're really pushing on it. And that's, I think, where the Invincible 3 really comes in because ZoomX foam won't let you down. And the Invincible 3, I think, is um, an optimal sort of performance trainer that you can bring into training. Now, that's where the ASIC Super Blast comes in. The Super Blast really is a training shoe. And that's where the Nike Invincible 3 really compares to both of these shoes, in that it can be used as a daily trainer, but it can also be used as a training shoe, and a training shoe in the sense that you're training for a race. It's a shoe you're bringing in to train for a marathon. Now, I have a bunch of videos on marathon rotations. I'll put a link in the description to those. I also have the original Nova Blast 3 versus Invincible 3 comparison video. I'll also put a link in the description. But for the sake of this video, if you look at these three shoes, you go from daily trainer on the left to trainer on the right. And I think the prices of each one of these shoes really is justified. Now, I don't talk a lot about price on this channel, but for the price that you're, you're paying for the Nova Blast, that makes sense because it's intended as a daily trainer. The Invincible is sort of a hybrid between the two. It can go daily trainer, can go training. So I think the price maybe is a little expensive on that one, but I think it still is justified for what it is, especially given that it's a huge chunk of ZoomX foam. And then the Super Blast on this kind of far end on the right side of this really is that trainer. And frankly, I have so many more miles in the Super Blast at this point that I really honestly consider the Super Blast a super shoe at this point. It is in the same category as the Vaporfly 3, the Metaspeed Sky Plus, or the Audios Pro 3 for me. It is equal to those shoes. Just because it doesn't have a carbon plate in it doesn't mean it's not as capable. It is a super shoe. It is very capable. And for a super shoe, the price of the Super Blast, I think, is actually pretty cheap. And for a dedicated training shoe that you're going to pull into your marathon training, I think the price actually also works. But the key here is I don't think ASICs ever intended the Super Blast to be a daily trainer. That's the Nova Blast. So that's the relationship of these three shoes. So now if we go to actually compare the Invincible 3 to the Super Blast, starting with the Invincible, what we have in the Invincible is 40 mil of ZoomX foam in the heel, 31 in the forefoot, giving you a 9 mil drop. Now the weight for the US men's size 9 reference size is 10.6 ounces or 300 grams, which actually makes the Invincible 3 a bit of a heavy shoe. Though, I'll talk about this a bit later in the video, you don't necessarily feel that on the foot. Now, as I've said, it's a full ZoomX midsole with a heel clip. The heel clip is around the heel, gives the shoe a little bit stability and support in the arch, and it does have a modern rocker geometry. If we look at the Super Blast now, this shoe is 45.5 millimeters in the heel, 37.5 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight mil drop. What is actually kind of crazy about this shoe is that it's 8.4 ounces or 238 grams. 
There is no reason for this shoe to be as lightweight as it is, but it is insanely lightweight, not just for its size, but really for any shoe. The shoe feels like nothing when you pick it up, which for a shoe as large as it is, shouldn't be the case. And definitely when you're comparing it to the Invincible 3, you do feel the weight difference. Though I will say both these shoes, when they're on your foot, they don't feel as heavy or bulky as maybe they should be, given that there's a lot of shoe for both of these. Um, now, for the ASIC Super Blast, we have FF Turbo and FF Blast Plus foam in the midsole. So there's about a 90-10 or 80-20 mix of the foam. Most of it is FF Turbo, which is ASIC's premier racing foam. And you, again, have the modern rocker geometry, but you also have a very extreme toe spring, which is something you see across all of ASICS's shoes lately. And this shoe is no different. And it works exceptionally well. So what is the fit and feel of these shoes? Well, this is where they begin to be very different. Starting with the Invincible 3, this I would actually call a fairly traditional Nike shoe in that they have this upper, which I actually quite like, but I know a lot of people have not liked how stiff this upper is. Nike calls this Flyknit. To me, it's not really Flyknit, at least Flyknit of old. Um, it's sort of a coated, stiffer upper. Again, I like the upper, but it is it is a fairly substantial upper. There's a lot of upper here, and I think a lot of the weight of this shoe actually comes from all the material in the upper. Now, on the Super Blast, we couldn't be farther from what Nike was doing on the Invincible. This shoe has one of the lightest uppers that I think I've felt on a training shoe, even a race shoe in some time. This upper feels, the material of this upper feels like the material that if you ever go to the grocery store and you get fruit that's wrapped in that, that fabric-y styrofoam material, that's what this upper feels like but it's way more durable because it feels like it's going to rip every time I put my foot in it, but it never does. This is a very minimal, very nice fitting upper. And I think a lot of the weight or lack of weight in the shoe comes from this really streamlined upper. ASICS has some great uppers, especially on the Metaspeed series and the Magic Speed 3 right now, but this upper is definitely up there. It is an exceptional upper. The lockdown in the shoe is very good. The heel hold down or lockdown is very good. Overall, this upper just fits very well. It's very minimal and it very much gets out of the way and just allows the shoe to disappear on your foot, which is really the opposite of this. Now this shoe does disappear on your foot, but it's more like the whole shoe disappears on your foot. Again, this is a fairly heavy shoe, but when you're running in it, it does not feel as big as it is. I wouldn't call it a racing flat. I wouldn't even say it's like the streak fly, but it doesn't run as large as it is. And it's nothing about the upper, it's just the entire shoe sort of disappears under your foot. Now the primary difference between these two shoes really is in the midsole. And I think the real magic in the midsole is on this shoe, on the Super Blast. Like I said, it's a, the light blue foam is FF Turbo, ASICS's premier racing foam, and the dark blue is FF Blast Plus, the same foam that's on the Nova Blast 3, and it's their training foam. Now, I think the magic of this shoe isn't the stack height. This has sort of an extreme stack height. I don't think that's really what makes this shoe so special. I think it's the combination and the proportion of these two foams. The fact that this shoe is mostly FF Turbo, which is a firmer, less resilient super foam that's smoothed out by the uh, darker blue FF Blast Plus foam makes this shoe have the performance of FF Turbo without the harshness of a pure FF Turbo shoe. If you've ever run in a Metaspeed, you understand that FF Turbo, while it can be soft sometimes, it can also feel quite harsh. The FF Blast Plus in this shoe smooths all that out and gives you the performance of the firmer FF Turbo with the smoother sort of foot strike and foot landing of the FF Blast Plus. I have a bunch of videos on this shoe. I'll put links to descriptions on the, the deeper dives into the shoe. I talk a lot more about that, but that really is what makes this shoe so special. Whereas with the Invincible, this is all Zumex foam. And it's what you would expect. It's bouncy, it's fun, it's Zumex foam. Now this shoe is a little stiffer than the Invincible 1 or 2. Again, I have multiple videos going really deep into the design of this shoe, 
why it's different, why I think it's better. Um, I'll put links in the descriptions to all of that stuff. One of the primary differences in how these shoes feel, and I also think it has a lot to do with the weight of the shoe, is the outsole on this shoe. The Invincible has a full rubber outsole where the Super Blast has sort of these rails of foam or of rubber with a lot of exposed foam, which I think, again, helps make this shoe much lighter, but makes the landing and in, in the, the compliance to the ground much softer in this shoe. So again, I think this outsole, as much as I don't think it's as versatile as maybe this full rubber outsole on the Invincible, it definitely um, does the job. It gives you enough grip. I think it gives you better grip than the Nova Blast 3, but this exposed foam allows for a softer, smoother landing. Again, taking a lot of the harshness out of FF Turbo. So then what's the verdict between these shoes for me? Now, a lot of these comparison videos I do, I try to pick one and say, this is the better shoe, or this is the one I like, or this is the one I'm gonna spend more time in. But this one, it's not quite that simple because I think it's gonna come down to really what you want. I think the Invincible 3 is a shoe that if you just wanna buy one shoe, that you're gonna do daily training in, and then eventually when you start to train for a race, you start a build for say a marathon, and you want a shoe that's going to work for training, a lot of your long miles, some of your recovery miles, easy miles, and you just want one shoe to do all of that, this is the shoe, because again, this shoe can be a better daily trainer, but it can also do a lot of the performance training stuff as well. But if you're looking for a shoe that's a dedicated marathon training tool, and remember, shoes are tools, this is the shoe. This is not a daily trainer. I would never pick this for a daily trainer. It's, it will do fine, but you can get a lot more value for your money with, say, the Nova Blast 3, the Invincible. Any There's a ton of other better daily trainers that are much more versatile. But for training for a race or for a super shoe that doesn't have a carbon plate in it, this is the way to go. Right now I'm in a marathon build. This is a shoe I'm relying on for a lot of those long miles, long tempo miles, long easy miles, just the long miles because it essentially is a super shoe. But if I want to do those longer runs in a plated shoe, which I don't always want to, this shoe not having a plate is the perfect option. And it really is the plateless super shoe. Again, I have a bunch of videos on this shoe and I have one talking about what I think the future of this shoe is and why this shoe is so important. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. But it comes down to really what are you trying to do? Do you want a training tool to min-max your marathon build rotation? This is the shoe. Do you want a shoe that can do that but also work as a daily trainer when you're done with the marathon or post-marathon, this is the shoe. But if I had to pick one, I probably am gonna pick this one. I It's gonna be interesting. After I finish the marathon build, after I finish my race in November, I'm gonna be curious how much I wanna run in this shoe. I love running in this shoe. I am enjoying it in this build, but I don't know when it comes down to post-race and I'm not specifically training for a race, whether I'm going to want to spend a lot of time in this shoe. Because while it is very good, I prefer, if I'm going to run into daily trainer, honestly, I prefer a Pegasus. I want a little less shoe than this. But if I'm just doing easy miles, just general base building, this is the shoe that I'm probably going to go for over the Super Blast. So it'll be interesting to see where I go post-marathon and which shoe that I really determine. But right now for where I am in a marathon training build, the Super Blast is definitely the way to go. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing because you see more content like this pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.